Okay, so uh, again, there's three big ideas in calculus. The first one is limits, the second one is derivatives, the third one is integrals. And so far we've been able to look at limits and derivatives. We've spent the most of our time lately looking at uh, derivatives. We're going to regress and go back to limits. If you remember the other day, we uh, encountered this limit right here. I showed you guys that the derivative of sine of x was what? Cosine of x. In fact, we proved that. If you remember, we had one whole page filled out. We used something called the sandwich theorem or the squeeze through theorem in order to do it. But we came up with two really important limits. First limit and the second limit that were used during that time. Do you remember what the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of theta over theta is equal to? It was one. Exactly. Why was it one? I will show you. That's why it was one. Remember when we went through that whole beast? That's why it was one. Okay? So, um, kind of have to go back and see that or just accept that it's fact. Uh, the second one, limit is theta goes zero. Cosine theta minus one over theta. That is, in fact, zero. I'm going to rewrite this once more so that you can understand, hopefully, a point I'm trying to make. The limit as u goes to 0 of sine of u over u is equal to 1, meaning that as long as you have, okay, as long as you have the sine of something divided by that same something, that same something, okay? So look at this. Limit as theta goes zero of sine of two theta over theta. Well, now I have a two theta. Okay? So what I would like to have is a two theta in the denominator. Okay? You all okay with that? Watch how I'm going to create a two theta in the denominator. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by two. Is that legal to multiply the top and bottom of an expression by two? Because two over two is one. Now, I'm going to use something called the commutative property of multiplication. What is the commutative property of multiplication? You, 3 times 5 is the same as 5 times 3. You can move things back and forth and they maintain equality. Got that? So this becomes the limit as theta goes to 0 of sine of 2 theta over 2 theta times 2 over 1. See how I took the 2 and I moved it over here? That's totally legal. Are you fighting it or are you accepting it? What's that limit? One. That's the result. Okay, next one. Here we have the sine of 3 theta divided by 5 theta. You guys, you, you can't move this 3, okay? You're taking the sine of it. It would be as though if you said 2x plus 1 to the 100th power, you're like, oh, I'm just going to divide a 2 off. You get that? Or... How, how about this one? You, you got uh, the sine of x divided by n, and you're like, it's 6. You guys are laughing. These are like, this is like student work for previous years. <laughs> That's kind of smart. Stop it. Now, now, we're, now we're falling off. Okay. Yeah, stand up math comedy. Very good. Yeah. Hey, you guys are the only ones who would get it. Right? <laughs> Everybody was like, what? Okay. 
what do I want in the denominator? I want a 3. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by? No. I can multiply by 3 fifths. If I do that, 3 fifths is, is uh, it's, it's not 1. I multiply by the identity, which is 1. Now, I will be able to use the commutative property of multiplication and move things around. The limit as theta goes to 0 of sine of 3 theta over what? 3 theta times 3 fifths. So I put the 3 where the 5 was and 5 where the 3 was because it's all multiplication in the denominator, right? You can move things around. What is that? 1 times 3 fifths is 3 fifths. What's that? Right, so this is this is sometimes what people see is they're like, okay, if I just take that 3 theta over 5 theta, I get 3 over 5. I'll just disregard the sign. Um, it doesn't always work out like that. Sometimes it does, but it does not always work out like that. I want to be clear that uh, when you are asked to present this type of a problem on the test, your work must support your result. Simply just answering three fifths will not cut, okay? All right, so next one's a little bit more difficult, isn't it? Yeah, it is. In fact, I've got this little cosine of theta minus one. What would I want in the denominator? I would want a theta, correct? So we're gonna, we're gonna try to create that. Limit as theta goes to zero of cosine of theta minus one over sine of theta. Now, you said you wanted what in the denominator? Thank you. Oh. Wow, I'm all of a sudden like a flower delivery service here. Okay, what do we want in the denominator? Theta. So I should multiply by theta over theta because that is 1. I've maintained equality. No, because it's we have sine of theta. You can't separate. Here. And folks, here. so here's, here's what you're wanting to do, and this is what you need to be very careful with. Could you say, well, I have the square root of x. Well, yeah, I've got an x. We'll just have a square root. We'll have an x. We'll just, we'll just separate that x from the square root. You, you wouldn't do that, would you? That's exactly like the same thing as the sine of theta. The, it, sine is an operation. You may not remove it from there. So what we want is we want the cosine of theta minus 1 all over theta. This is what we want. I'm going to put that, cosine theta minus 1 over theta. What remains? Okay. What is this limit? This is 0. Got used to writing theta. That's 0. Times... What? Folks, yep, you got to got to focus. We just came up with that one right there. Zero times. Now, folks, we said that the limit as theta goes to zero, sine of theta over theta was one. Here we have the reciprocal. Well, what's the reciprocal of one?
sometimes you can encounter a situation where you're kind of misled. Look at this one. People see this one right away, and all of a sudden, they, they go down the path. They say, like, well, it, it's one because I got a 4X and I got a 4. That's incorrect. Watch what happens here. I'm just going to use a basic principle here called substitution. If you plug in 0, what is the sign of 0? Zero over four. What is zero over four? It's zero. Look at all these other examples that we did. If you plug in zero right away, the sign of zero is, and then the bottom you get zero. And zero over zero, we don't know what it is. It turns out it's two. The same thing here. Look at this situation. The sign of zero is zero. Divided by zero, you have zero over zero. Look at this one. You have the cosine of, of 0, which is 1, minus 1, which is over 0. Again, you get 0 over 0. Watch this. Anybody know what the cotangent of 0 is? It's undefined. So you should always be careful to plug in 0 to make sure you get 0 over 0, and then go about your work. So I'm going to change this one, our last one, to the limit as x goes to 0 of tangent of 5x over the sine of 5x. I'm changing it because I just was trying to make a point with the problem. Now, if you plug in 0, the tangent of 0 is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So we, we get 0 over 0, which is a big problem. We're going to work through it. Oh, boy. Any thoughts of what to do? Very good. We're going to rewrite the tangent to be what? Sine of 5x over cosine of 5x over sine of 5x. I'm sorry, guys. Can I change this? I never intended to be 5 here. I intended to be 3. 3x. Now what? Yep, and we're going to get the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of 5x over cosine of 5x times 1 over the sine of 3x. At this point, you must understand what's causing the problem. Again, we're getting 0 over 0. Sine of 5x, does that produce 0 if you plug 0 in? Yeah. How about cosine of 0? Does that produce 0? It produces 1. So notice how this is not causing a problem at all, is it? Here, sine of 0, that produces 0. So notice this is an issue, and this is an issue. We don't care at all about the cosine of 5x. That's just fine. You plug in 0, you get 1 there. Everybody agreed? So I don't want sine of 5x over cosine of 5x. What do I want in the denominator here? Oh, boy. I want 5x. Everybody agreed? So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by... 5x over 5x. Will that give me a 5x in the denominator? Yes. Here, I have 1 over sine of 3x. What would I like to have in the numerator? A 3x. So I'll multiply the top and bottom by 3x. So let's see what we have. I will cross them off so that we can stay nice and in order. I have sine of 5x over what? 5x. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the sine of 5x and then the 5x that's in the denominator. So I can see what I've used up. I'm now going to go to my 1 over sine of 3x. What should I have in the numerator now? Times 3x over sine of 3x. I got rid of the 3x in the numerator. 
and the sine of 3x in the denominator. Does the cosine of 5x cause any problem? We don't have to have a 5x in the numerator. We don't have to have a uh, anything in denominator. We could just have that 1 over cosine of 5x. There's nothing wrong with the cosine. Got rid of the cosine of 5x and the 1. What remains? What is 5x over 3x? 5 thirds. Let's see what we get. What does this come out to be? 1 times, what does this come out to be? 1. Let's see, we, we plug in 0 here. The cosine of 0 is, so you get 1 over 1 times 5 thirds, and you get 5 thirds. There we go.